What's up everybody? My name is Jonathan Casey. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is a channel where I like to talk all things tech related. It doesn't matter if it's a camera, a smartphone, or a computer. Chances are you're going to see it on this channel. I deliver content in a unique and interesting format and I do it every single week. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and click that subscribe button. In this video, we're going to be going over some tips and tricks for your Galaxy Note 10 Plus, Galaxy S10 Plus, whatever Galaxy you might have that is running One UI 2.0. It was recently released and it's been pushed out to the masses and I can't wait to show you what I've discovered. First things first, I have two Galaxy Note 10 Pluses here. This one's running the previous version of One UI, while this one's running One UI 2.0. That way I have a point of reference in order to show you the difference between the old with the new. The first thing I want to talk about is the new animations inside of One UI 2.0. This is going to be really hard to show you on camera, but believe me, they are there and they're very noticeable. They're going to make your phone seem a little bit more fluid and faster just because of how good they are. I mean, they're very, very smooth. Like I said, it's really hard to show you on camera, but they are there. Like if I go fast, you can see how kind of like jerky this one is, whereas this one is nice and smooth. And it's almost like it's doing like a higher refresh rate, but obviously that's not the case. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus still has a 60 hertz display, but the S20 on the other hand will have 120 hertz display. So maybe this is in preparation for that phone, but nonetheless, the animations are really, really smooth. And uh, yeah, I definitely am enjoying the new animations. Next up is the new quick toggle menu. So if we pull down the notification shade and then dive into the quick toggle menu here, you can see it's more compressed on One UI 2.0 versus One UI 1.5. We have four rows of icons here versus three here. If we go into the settings on 1.5 and go under button grid, you can see you could do five by three, but you can't do five by four, four by four, or three by four. If you're someone that uses the quick toggles all of the time, you're definitely going to be able to appreciate this because you're gonna get more quick toggles off a single swipe down and not have to go over to the next page. Plus it just looks cleaner. I like the compressed look of this versus this. If you're a fan of Android 10's navigation gestures versus using the navigation buttons, then you're gonna appreciate the fact that you can access Android 10's gestures on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. To do so, let me show you. So if we dive into the settings on both phones and then go under display, you're gonna scroll down until you see navigation bar and then tap that. Tap navigation bar over here. And you can see I have full screen gestures already set up on One UI 2.0. And if we tap it over here on One UI 1.5, despite the settings looking identical, there's actually a big difference. On One UI 1.5, the full screen gestures refer to the ones that Samsung has implemented in One UI 1.0, 1.1, 1 you know, all the way through up until 2.0. And now with One UI 2.0, you're gonna get Android 10's gestures. So let me show you the difference. So if I select full screen gestures on One UI 1.5, you can see it puts three bars down here on the bottom. These aren't gonna stay there, they're just for reference. They'll disappear once we go to the home screen. Bounce to the home screen, you can see they are officially gone. If I go to the home screen over here on One UI 2.0, and then if I wanna access my background applications, I had to swipe up, hold it, and then there they are. Whereas on One UI 1.5, if I swipe up from the right-hand corner, that's how I access my background apps. And this also translates to in-app navigation. Let me quickly show you. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Google app on One UI 2.0 and then just tap on a link. Now, if I wanna go back to the home page, I just swipe from the left to the right and it takes me back to the home page. This is definitely different than One UI 1.5. So if I go into the Google app on One UI 1.5 and then tap on a link, if I wanna go back to the home page, I can't just swipe over. As you can see, it's not doing anything. I have to swipe from the bottom left-hand corner and then it's gonna take me back to the home page. Again, it's just different how each of these operate. Personally, I prefer the gestures on Android 10 versus the ones from 1.5. However, if you're accustomed to the ones on 1.5, I could see how you might wanna stick with these versus these, but um, it's all down to personal preference. While we're on the topic of gestures, there's also a new one-handed mode gesture that I personally feel is night and day better than the old gestures. In order to access the one-handed mode gestures on 1.5, you're gonna go into the settings menu and then scroll down until you see advanced features and then scroll down until you see gestures. So then tap on motions and gestures, and then you're gonna find an option for one-handed mode. 
tap on it instead of just turning it on make sure you tap on one-handed mode that way it pulls up the secondary menu then you can either use the gesture or the button now the gesture is coming from the corner right here and then just dragging your finger up to the center of the screen and it's going to make the display smaller to get out of this just tap on the blank area over there and the other option is button so if you tap on button now if you triple press the home button it's going to do the exact same thing in my opinion triple pressing the home button has always been the fastest but that was before android 10's one-handed mode gesture Gesture, which is super easy. To access the one-handed mode on One UI 2.0, go back into the settings, scroll down until you see advanced features. However, instead of tapping on motions and gestures, just look right below it and you have the one-handed mode right there. So obviously to access it, it's a little bit different in the settings, but personally, I feel like 2.0 is definitely better and easier to locate. So once you're inside the setting, you have a couple different options. You have gesture and you have button. Button is going to be identical to 1.5. However, gesture, well, gesture is going to be where the new hotness is at. To use a new gesture, you're gonna to go to the bottom of the phone here and just swipe down. And it's as easy as that. And to get out of it, you just tap on the blank space just like you did with 1.5. I just find that this is so much more convenient and so much more easier to use versus having to do a diagonal swipe or even a triple press of the home button. This next thing is very minute and very minimal. Most of you guys probably won't even care, but I'm gonna tell you anyways, if we go inside the quick toggles and then locate a night mode over here on One UI 1.5, you can see it's labeled as night mode versus on One UI 2.0, it's labeled as dark mode. Again, not that big of a deal. They both do exactly the same thing. However, I just wanted to make sure that you're able to locate night mode now that it's called dark mode, which is why I'm including it in this video. This next thing I'm actually liking a lot, and that's the new revamped device care menu, which to me looks really, really good. So on One UI 1.5, if we go back into the settings and then go down to device care, you can see that's what it looked like. And I actually did a video covering some tips and tricks for One UI 1.5 to get the most out of your battery life when it comes to the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. If you missed that video, check it out at the card at the top. Those same tips are going to apply for 2.0. However, the navigation to access those settings has changed a little bit. So on One UI 2.0, if we go into the settings, scroll down to device care, you can see right off the bat, there is a big difference in the way things look here. So not only does it look a little better, but you also get a little bit more functionality. So if we dive into battery, for instance, and then take a look at what we have on 1.5, you can see it's pretty bare. Whereas over here, we have a few additional features, including setting limits to wireless power share, which I definitely think is a big deal. This way, whenever you're using wireless power share, you don't use it until your phone dies. It's gonna stop, as you can see, at 30%, which is really, really cool. There's a few other things within device care. So if we bounce back and then take a look here, other than just the actual setup, if you dive into these individual settings, such as memory, you can see things have changed and they look better over here and just a little bit less intrusive, I would say. I don't know, they both function almost identical. So if I tap clean now, it's going to do the exact same thing. However, this just looks better, maybe a little bit quicker. And uh, yeah, it still gets the job done on 1.5, but I definitely prefer the device care settings and how everything works on 2.0 a lot more. Another really cool redesign when it comes to 2.0 versus 1.5 is within the camera app. And I gotta say, this is one of my favorite revamps. So if we take a look at 1.5 versus 2.0, they're very similar except for some font changes. Everything is nice and tidy over here. You also get six rows of icons up here for quick toggles and your setting toggle versus five over here on 1.5. And the new addition up here at the top is for motion photo. So no longer do you have to go into the settings and then toggle on and off motion photo right here. You can access it on the fly with that toggle right there. This is pretty cool. Now, me personally, I don't really use motion photo, but I know a lot of people that do. And being able to toggle it on and off without having to dive into the settings is pretty nice. But the biggest difference when it comes to 2.0 versus 1.5 comes down to the customization of your shooting modes. So if I go over here to more, I can tap on this little pencil icon right here and then drag pro mode down to the bar down here and then save it. Now I have the option to select pro mode right here just by swiping over. And if I wanna remove some of these, I can go back over to more and then tap on the pencil icon and say I wanna get rid of live focus video. I can just drag it up and now it's out of my way. This gives me the ability to access the modes that I use more frequently versus having to go through every single one and locate the one 
that I want. This isn't really a new feature since you can do the same thing on One UI 1.5, but it's just not as seamless as it is on 2.0. In order to do the same thing on One UI 1.5, you're gonna swipe over until you see edit, then tap on edit, and now you can select or deselect the modes that you don't want. So if I didn't want Instagram, food, or night, and I wanted to put live focus all the way at the top, I could do it just like that. Again, it's going to accomplish the same thing, but One UI 2.0 is just a simplified version of this, and I definitely prefer it. All right, so staying within the camera app, there are a few other things that I wanna talk about. And the first has to do with slow motion. So now with One UI 2.0, an additional feature is the ability to take slow fees, if that's what you wanna call it. In other words, slow motion video with the front facing camera. On One UI 1.5, you cannot do this, but let me show you how to access it. So with One UI 2.0, you're just gonna to go to slow motion and then just flip it to the front facing camera and that's it. Where if you try to do it on 1.5, you can see it kicks you out and then now you have the available options for the front facing camera and slow motion is nowhere to be found. I don't know how you feel about it. I probably will never use front facing slow motion video, but if you're a slow fee kind of person, you now have that option. You don't have to go with an iPhone to do it. The next thing has to do with pro mode. So let's go ahead and switch back to the rear facing camera and then locate pro mode on both of these. And the new enhancements are actually really cool for long exposure and for low light photography. So if you go to ISO on 1.5, you can only go up to ISO 800. However, on 2.0, you can go all the way up to 3200. I don't know how usable this is going to be. I mean, even 800 is pretty noisy for a small sensor on a smartphone, but it is kind of cool that it's there. The other addition has to do with your shutter speed. So if you go to shutter speed on 1.5, you can do a 10 second exposure, whereas on 2.0, you can go all the way up to 30 seconds. So if you're trying to do a long exposure for astrophotography, for instance, you're definitely going to be able to accomplish more on One UI 2.0. And again, this is a great addition. I just don't know how usable it's going to be as I haven't completely tested it myself. But if you want me to, let me know down in the comment section. While we're on the topic of the camera, let's go ahead and talk about the gallery because there has been some improvements when it comes to that as well. So let's go ahead and dive into the gallery on 1.5. And then we're gonna dive into the gallery on 2.0. And other than the cosmetic differences, which obviously 2.0 just looks way cleaner. If we dive into the settings, you can see the cosmetic differences actually translate there as well. I personally feel like this just looks better. However, one additional feature is Cloud Sync. So if I enable that, I'm able to back up my gallery to my OneDrive um, cloud storage. This is really cool because it gives you one extra option to backing up your photos, whether it's video, raw images, or your JPEGs, all in full resolution to your OneDrive folder. So if you're a Microsoft Office user, this is just a no brainer. And it's definitely a better option in my personal opinion than using Google Photos, which may not give you the full resolution. So it's just another great option and it gives you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to backing up your files. Another great feature with One UI 2.0 versus 1.5 is the addition of a recycle bin within the Files app. So if I go into the Files app on One UI 1.5 and I go under the settings here, you can see there's no option for trash or recycle bin. But if I go into it on 2.0 here, you can see you have the option for trash and this is going to act as a recycle bin. So if you delete something that you didn't mean to delete, you can go in and then recover it by going under your recycle bin. So if I delete this file right here, for instance, and we will delete it and then go under my recycle bin, it's right here. And I could always recover it by going to restore. Another small little thing that I personally feel like makes a big difference when it comes to the user experience is the volume controls. So if I access the volume controls on One UI 1.5 by hitting the volume down button and then swiping down, you can see everything is there. I mean, I have access to my media ringtone, notifications, um, system, Bixby voice, and of course some options down here on the bottom, but it's not very clean in my personal opinion. If I go over to One UI 2.0, it's a lot smaller. If I swipe down, I have the same options as 1.5, but they're more compressed and it just looks a little bit neater in my personal opinion. And I'm definitely liking the way this looks over 1.5.
If you're a fan of digital well-being and all of the settings and functionality that comes along with it, you're gonna love this. So if we go into the digital well-being on 1.5 by diving into the settings, locating digital well-being and tapping on that, you can see it gives you some basic information. It looks pretty good, but the information itself is kind of limited, especially when you compare it to 2.0. So we'll go ahead and dive into the settings on 2.0, go under digital well-being and parental controls because now they have merged and they become one setting and you can see you have a lot of information here you have a lot of options a lot of settings everything is straightforward easy to find easy to read and ultimately providing you more functionality with digital well-being on one ui 2.0 just like digital well-being and parental controls have merged to become one, there's a lot of other subtle changes within the settings that I think really enhance the user experience and make things a little bit more simplistic. If we bounce out of digital well-being on both phones and then go and locate wallpapers and themes, on One UI 1.5, it is a single setting, whereas on 2.0, we have wallpapers and themes, two different settings. To me, this makes a lot more sense. What if you just wanna change your wallpaper and not your theme? You're able to do that now, and best of all, when you launch wallpapers, it doesn't take you to the Galaxy Theme Store. If I tap on wallpapers, you can see I have the option to choose the wallpapers that are pre-installed on my phone, which are all of these. And then I could also go to my gallery and pick out one, or I can select wallpaper services, which this is going to give me things like the dynamic lock screen and settings to go along with that. But if I go back, I can also go to my wallpapers and then select downloaded. And these are gonna be all the ones that I have downloaded from the Galaxy Theme Store. In my personal opinion, this is just way easier compared to One UI 1.5 over here, where if I select wallpapers and themes, then the Galaxy Theme Store automatically launches. And to me, this is just a little bit more cumbersome versus this. Another setting change comes down to the privacy settings. It's no longer located in the biometrics and security setting, which honestly privacy should be on its own anyways. So if we go into One UI 1.5, you can see we have the option for biometrics and security. If we tap on that and then scroll down, we have the option for privacy, which includes location, app permissions, so on and so forth. If we go into One UI 2.0 and then locate biometrics and security, right below that, we have the option for privacy. So it's a standalone setting, which I personally like more because now I can go into privacy and everything is straightforward and I can locate what I need to locate without having to go through a sub menu. Staying on a topic of biometrics and security, there's actually a few things that have changed within those settings that I really think you're gonna appreciate. So if we go into biometrics and security on One UI 1.5 and then go under where it says face recognition, and then tap that. I'll go ahead and enter my code. You can see we have options for face unlock, stay unlock screen, faster face recognition, brighten the screen in case it's really dark and the camera just can't make out your face. And other than that, that's about it. If we dive into biometrics and security on One UI 2.0 and then go under face recognition, enter my passcode, we have a ton more options here, but the ones that stand out to me personally are the ability to add an additional look or an additional face. So if you have someone else, like maybe your wife that needs to get into your phone and you like using face unlock, you can put her look in there. If you wear glasses sometimes, but not all the time, you could put that look in there. The other new option is to require open eyes in order to unlock your phone with face unlock. Obviously this is embedded into Android 10 and it's because of the Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL where people were using each other's phones and unlocking them while they were asleep. So now you can't do that unless you're insane and you sleep with your eyes open, which I guess it does happen. But this is a really great addition and it just gives you that one extra step of security. Before we leave biometrics and security, there's one additional feature that I do wanna talk about that's new to One UI 2.0 and I have really enjoyed using it so far. So if we go under fingerprints and then enter my code on both phones, then you're gonna have the option to actually customize the fingerprint icon. This is really neat. Taking a look at One UI 1.5, you can see you have no option to customize the fingerprint icon. And if I were to take this phone and then lock it, you can see by default, it doesn't show when the screen is off, but if I tap the screen, you can see it pops up right there. And if I go to the always on display, you should be able to see it as well. Now, if I go over to One UI 2.0, I can tap where it says show icon when screen is off and I have three different choices. I can do on with the always on display. I can do tap to show and then I can do never. 
obviously never is going to be where it never displays the fingerprint icon tap to show if you tap the screen that's when it will show it and then of course on with always on display is just like it was with one ui 1.5 so no difference there but me personally i've been using tap to show it's been working well and i really like the way this is set up Moving on to the lock screen, it's been improved with One UI 2.0. Even if it's just a minute amount, it still adds to that user experience that I've been talking about this entire video. So taking a look at the lock screen here, you can see the always on display is pretty much identical. It's a little bit cleaner over here and easier to read in my personal opinion. But if we take a look at the actual lock screen and then tap on a notification, you can see it functions differently. One UI 2.0 just shows me my notifications, which it should versus 1.5. It pulls down the notification shade and it displays the quick toggles as well. There's also a few additional shortcuts that you can add to your lock screen that um, I think are really useful. If we go into the settings of One UI 2.0, go under lock screen and then tap on shortcuts, the two that stand out to me the most right off the bat are the do not disturb and flashlight. Because if we go over to One UI 1.5, go under lock screen and then go under app shortcuts, you can see those two options are not there. But other than that, the app support is pretty much the same. I don't notice any differences there. The last few things I want to talk about because I know this video is getting super duper long and I don't want to take up any more of your time has to do with notifications and the built in Samsung internet browser. So if we look at the notifications on both 1.5 and 2.0, the biggest difference here is the fact that on 2.0, it separates your notifications into silence notifications as well as regular. And then over on 1.5, it just gives you everything without any kind of split. I really appreciate this because a lot of the times I don't need to see the silence notifications. I only want to see my new notifications. So this is going to come in handy. If we dive into the Samsung browser here, you can actually customize the icons down here. So if I go into my settings and then go under appearance and then tap on customize menu, you can actually organize the bottom menu here as well as your actual um, menu or settings menu. If you go into the Samsung browser on One UI uh, 1.5, this option is nowhere to be found. And I really appreciate this for sure. So go under settings and then tap under appearance and you can see that option is not there. This is a great addition to uh, 2.0 if you're using the Samsung browser. Me personally, I use either Microsoft Edge or Chrome, so it doesn't really apply to me, but I know a lot of people that really, really love the Samsung internet browser, so this is definitely welcomed. There are a ton of other features and additions to One UI 2.0 versus 1.5, so if you wanna see a follow-up video with the ones that I had to leave out of this video, let me know down in the comment section and I'll definitely get to it and bust it out, because there's some really cool things that I just couldn't talk about because this video was getting way way too long. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Galaxy S20 content is coming, so you know what that means. Tips and tricks everywhere, and if you don't want to miss that, you know what to do. Enable notifications so you can be alerted when that content drops, and I'll catch you wonderful people in the next video.